Brienne here from Hooked on Homemade Happiness. Welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to make the boho tank top. For this tank top, I am using my cotton worsted weight yarn. This is Dishy from We, Cro we Crochet or from Knit Picks. You can use any worsted weight cotton yarn or even if you wanted to use an acrylic yarn. I, I prefer cotton for our summer projects because they're a little bit lighter feeling than acrylic or wool. I'll also be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook and then you'll also need a yarn needle and some scissors. So to make this tank top we were going to be making seven squares. Um, to make this square we are going to start with a chain five. So get your yarn on your hook and we're going to chain five. And then now we're going to slip stitch to the very first chain of this series in order to make a ring and this is where our, our granny square is going to start. And now for round one we are going to chain four. And this chain four counts as a double crochet plus chain one. So the first three chains count as your double crochet and then your fourth chain counts as your chain one. The chain three um, does count as a double crochet throughout this pattern. And now we're going to double crochet into the ring. So I yarn over, insert my hook into the circle, yarn over and pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two, for a double crochet and then chain one. So now I have two double crochets and two chain one spaces. I'm going to do that 10 more times for a total of 12 double crochets and 12 chain one spaces. So again I'll yarn over and I'm still working in the center space, insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop and work my double crochet and chain one. And we'll continue that around until you have 12 double crochet and 12 chain one. And you may need to kind of shift these over a bit to make room in your circle. So I've repeated that around double crochet, chain one, until I had tw have 12 double crochet and 12 chain one. And I'm ending with a chain one here. And now I'm going to join to the first double crochet, which was the chain three. So I'm going to join to the top of the chain three because I want to leave that um, fourth chain that I started with here so I have a chain one space. So there is round one. You should have 12 double crochet and 12 chain one spaces. For round two, we're going to start with a chain three. And this counts as a double crochet. And then in the chain one space, I'm going to work two double crochet in this chain one space. There's one. And now in the next double crochet, and you'll have to move these over a little bit to see the top of the next stitch, there we go. In the next double crochet, work one double crochet. And then in the chain one space, two double crochet. And then in the next double crochet, one double crochet. And we'll do that all the way around. One double crochet in the double crochet and two double crochet in the chain one space. So this is the end of round two and I ended with two double crochet in the last chain one space. So you'll have a total of 36 double crochet for round two. 
and I'm going to join now to the top of my first chain three and for round three we will start with a chain four and in this round this chain four counts as a treble cro crochet and we're going to be working treble crochet clusters around so I'm going to start with a two treble crochet cluster so to do treble crochet I'm going to yarn over twice I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and yarn over over and pull through two I'm going to leave these last two loops on my hook yarn over twice insert my hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and then yarn over and pull through all three so there is a two treble cluster now for the remainder of the round we're going to be working three treble clusters the reason we only did two here is because our first chain four counted as one treble so now I'm going to chain four and then I'm going to work that three treble cluster over the next three stitches so I'm going to yarn over twice be careful not to get this chain four caught up on your um, hook while you're yarning over insert my hook into the next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through two I have two loops on my hook I'm going to leave those there I'm going to yarn over twice insert my hook into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two yarn over pull through two now I have three loops on my hook do that one more time yarn over twice insert my hook into the next stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two now I have four loops on my hook I'm going to yarn over and pull through all four I like to kind of pull my hook up to make sure there's lots of room for my hook to slide through all those loops and pull through all four and we'll repeat that around our circle so chain four and then now uh, three treble cro crochet cluster over the next three stitches so I'll yarn over twice and work the first two steps of that treble leaving the two hooks on my hook two loops on my hook yarn over twice and then the next stitch yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two now I have three loops on my hook yarn over twice the next one pull through two pull through two now I have four loops on my hook and I'll yarn over and pull through all four and chain four so again three treble crochet cluster over the next three I've yarned over twice I'm going to work the first steps of that treble leaving two loops on my hook I have three loops on my hook and now I have four loops on my hook I'm going to yarn over and pull through all four and then chain four repeat that all the way around and here is round three and I'm ending with a chain four and I'm going to join to the very first um, treble crochet cluster for my round and you should have 12 clusters for round three round four we're going to start with a chain five and we're going to be starting to make corner spaces one two three four five so we're going to start to turn our circle now into a square and now I'm going to so I have a chain five and I'm going to make a little loop right here I'm going to insert my hook back into the same stitch and make a slip stitch 
So I have a loop right there and that's going to be one of my corner spaces. Now I'm going to chain another five. And I'm just going to slip stitch to the next cluster. So you just have this chain five kind of laying on cro uh, across the top of the chain four. Chain five. And slip stitch to the next cluster. Chain five. Slip stitch to the next cluster. So I've done that three times. I have three more slip stitches and then now I'm at another place where I'm going to put a corner. So I'm going to chain five again and I'm going to slip stitch now again to that stitch again to make that little loop for my corner space. So you're going to make your little corner space and then you're going to chain five and slip stitch to the next cluster three times. So one, two, three and then make a little another another corner space and you're going to do that all the way around. So again I'm going to make these little chain spaces here three more times. So I'm going to chain five and slip stitch, slip stitch to the next cluster. There's one, I'm going to do it two more times. And once more So I've done that three times, one, two, three. Now I'm gonna make that corner loop again. So I'm gonna chain five. And then again, slip stitch into that same cluster. Oopsies, if I can grab it, try that one more time. There we go. I'm going to repeat that around now. Do your chain five, slip stitch to the next cluster three times, and then make your corner space. So here's my last chain five. You can see I have one, two, three, four corners with three chain five spaces in between each corner. So now here's my last chain five and I'm going to join by slip stitching to the very first chain and my first chain five. Now for round five, I'm going to slip stitch now to the top of this chain because I want to have a different starting point because I want to start at the top of this loop. So I just slip stitch up to the next. So here I joined, I'm going to show you that again. I joined the first chain of this chain five and I'm going to kind of skip this one and slip stitch up to the top of this loop because that's where I want to start for my next round. And I'm going to chain five. I'm going to do the same thing for my corner. And then again, slip stitch to that same space in the chain. to make a loop. So I have a loop on top of a loop. Now I'm going to chain five and now I'm going to slip stitch to the middle of this chain five from the previous round. And again chain five and slip stitch to this chain five from the previous round. And not to a specific chain or anything, just in the space, just in the center of the space is fine. Chain five. And then slip stitch to this chain five space. Chain five. and slip stitch to this chain five space. 
and then again chain five and we're going to make that loop so we're going to slip stitch to the same space again to make this loop on top of the loop for our corner and we're going to repeat what we just did all the way around so chain five and slip stitch into the chain five spaces around do that four times one two three four and then make your corner loop here I have repeated that all the way around and I'm going to join by slip stitching to the first chain five loop corner loop that I made so there is round five we just have one more round to go so for round six we will chain three and I'm going to work a corner space in this chain five loop so I'm going to double crochet in that same chain five loop chain three and then two double crochet again in this same loop so there's my corner space this chain three counts as a double crochet so I have two double crochet chain three two double crochet in my corner and that's going to go to what's going to happen in all of your corners so our first one we only worked one double crochet because the chain three counts as a stitch but for the remaining corners we'll have two double crochet chain three two double crochet now I'm going to do five double crochet in each chain five space across. So here's my first chain five space. I'm going to work five double crochet in this space. And again, in my next chain five space here, five double crochet. chain five space here, five double crochet and I have one more chain five space on this side, five double crochet So now I'm at my next corner where I'm going to do two double crochet, chain three, and two double crochet. Whoopsies. And repeat that around five double crochet in each chain five space and you will have four chain five spaces across each side and then in your corners two double crochet chain three two double crochet repeat that all the way around here is the end of round six um, I ended with five double crochet in this chain five space and now I'm back to my first chain three where I'm going to join with a slip stitch if you wanted to make these squares larger you could add an additional round of double crochet this is a one size pattern so, so if you wanted to make the top a little bit larger I would suggest making your squares a little bit larger in order to do that and then we're going to go ahead and snip the end and pull that through here is our finished square and you will need to make seven of these squares to make our tank top here I have my seven squares that I have finished. I am going to steam block these or you could also wet block them, but I would suggest blocking them before we sew just to um, stretch it out, even make your stitches stand out a little bit more and to kind of even out these wavy edges. So I'm going to go ahead and steam block mine and then we will come back for sewing. Here I have steam blocked all seven of my squares. So now we're going to start with our seaming. And I'm going to set them right side up. I'm going to have four 
across the top row. I'm going to set them diagonally like this. So I'm going to have my my video doesn't quite zoom out enough. So I'm going to have one, two, three, and I'm going to have a fourth one over here. There's my fourth one, and then I'm going to have three in each of these sections. So I have them set up like this and I'm going to start sewing them together with a slip stitch. So make sure you have the right side up. We're gonna get our hook and our yarn and we're gonna go ahead and start seaming them up with a slip stitch. We're going to start seaming down on this corner here, these two, squ um, two squares all the way on the right. And we're going to be going like this as we seam them together. So we're gonna start right here. So I'm gonna take these two squares right side facing up and I will seam them together using a slip stitch. So I'm gonna start with these two squares here. So I'm gonna push these to the side. And I'm going to insert my hook in one of these chains, my corner chains here. I'm going to do the back loop only, the inside loop only. So I have the inside loop on this chain and the inside loop on this chain. And I'm going to join my yarn, pulling up a loop, pull it a little bit more so I have a tail to weave in, there we go. And then I will insert my hook into the next back loop only of the next stitch. So the two inside loops. And I will pull that through with a slip stitch. And then the next two stitches. So I'm insert my hook. So here's the top two loops. Insert my hook only into this back loop in both of the stitches. And then work a slip stitch. I'm gonna do that across. Keep your slip stitches kind of loose because if you pull it too tight it will um, it may tighten it up a bit and may cause it to bunch. So here I'm gonna insert my, my hook into the back loop of the next stitch and then the back loop of the stitch from the other square. Oops, I accidentally grabbed both loops. There we go. And I will continue that across, being very careful to line up my stitches. You could also use um, stitch markers here to make sure that they are lined up, because, but because it's such a short little piece that I'm sewing, I'm just kind of keeping it in place by holding it. But you could definitely um, use stitch markers to keep it in place a little bit better if that's easier. And kind of flatten it out so you could see what it's looking like so far on the front. So it just creates such a pretty texture here where it's sewn. Of course, if you want to use a different sewing method, you could. If you wanted to just whip stitch it or however, or mattress stitch or whatever um, joining stitch you like to use. But I really like the pattern that this slip stitch in the back loop only creates. So I continue that all the way across keeping it a little bit loose because slip stitches can definitely get tight. All right, there's the last of the double crochets. I'm gonna go into the chain, the very next chain. Okay. So here's my first two, and remember these are gonna go in this diamond-like shape. So there's my first two. So my next one is gonna go right here and right here. So now I'm gonna work up these two sides here, and then the next one, I'll join those two sides. So I will grab these, 
right side facing up and here I'm working in those chains again right in the corner here on this side where I'm going to be joining the chain right before the first double crochet this chain and this one and work that slip stitch and then in the first double crochet back loop only, back loop only of the next square, and slip stitch. And we'll do that all the way across again. So I've joined these three squares now on this side here, and we will continue working in this pattern. So then you will continue working here where you're slip stitch along this side here and then this one will join where you'll work this way and then again back down and then your last one here until you have four on one side and three on the other the four Let's decide what the four is technically the top, but whichever end, way it ends up, doesn't matter. We can just turn it around. <laughs> so, because somehow mine ended up with three on top. I'm not sure how I did that, but I did. So, until you have four on one side, three in the other row, continuing to slip stitch this way until you get to the very end where you can go ahead and fasten off. Now that I have sewn all my squares together and woven all my ends, we are going to next single crochet around the entire piece and at the same time we will be adding the straps. So make sure that you have this facing where you have four across the top and three squares across the bottom. And we are going to be joining our yarn in the right most chain three corner here and we will single crochet in each uh, stitch and chain space around. So in these chain three spaces, we will just work three single crochet in those chain spaces. Here I'm going to join my yarn in this chain three space, the rightmost chain three space, and I will chain one, and I will work three single crochet in this chain three space. And now I will single crochet in each stitch across to the next corner. So one single crochet in each double crochet across to the next chain three space. So here is my last double crochet of this side. And I'm in the next chain three space and now we are going to add a strap. So we're going to, going to connect between this chain three space and the chain three space in the very next square, the one right next to it. So in this square right next to it, we're going to be joining for the strap. So we're going to start the strap by working one single crochet in this chain three space and then we're going to do the rest of the strap with foundation single crochet and that means we're going to do our foundation chain and the first row of single crochet all in the same time so we'll do that by starting with a chain two we're going to insert our hook into the second chain from our hook and yarn over and pull up a loop and now we're going to yarn over and pull through one that's our chain and then we're going to yarn over and pull through two and that's our single crochet. Now I'm going to insert my hook into that chain I just made. So right here, so here's your chain, here's your single crochet. Insert your hook right in between, right on top of those two bottom loops. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one, that's your chain. Yarn over, pull through two, that's your single crochet. So again, we're going to insert a hook right here. So here's where the chain starts, our chain stitches right here. So we're going to insert a hook 
here. So insert your hook into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, chain one, single crochet. Insert your hook into the chain one, pull up a loop, chain one, single crochet. And we're going to make 20 foundation single crochet for the strap. You can adjust this if you would like it bigger or smaller. Chain one, single crochet. So repeat this until you have 20 single crochet. Here I have my 20 foundation single crochet for my strap. Now I'm going to skip both of these sides and I'm going to join it to the next chain three space here with a single crochet. So I have this strap done. I'm going to insert my hook into this chain three space and pull up a loop and single crochet. And there you have your first strap. Now I'm going to continue single crocheting down this side. So in the next double crochet, I will work a single crochet and I will do that all the way down this side. So I've single crocheted all the way down this side and I'm to the next corner. I'm going to work two single crochet in this corner chain space. And then we will put our next single crochet here in this corner from our um, slip stitches where we joined, right in the center. So here's where my two squares meet. Right here we're going to put our next single crochet. and then two single crochet in the next chain space on the next square. Now we will work up this side of the next square. Single crochet in each chain space, I mean sorry, in each stitch across to the chain space. This is the next chain three space and I'm going to make my second strap. So I will again work one single crochet in that chain space. Now we will do another um, of the foundation single crochet, do another 20 of the foundation single crochet. So we will start with a chain two. Insert your hook into that second chain from, from your hook. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Chain one then single crochet. We'll insert our hook back into that chain one, chain one, and single crochet. Insert your hook into that chain one, pull up a loop, chain one, single crochet. Make 20 foundation single crochet. So again, I have my 20 foundation single crochet and I'm going to skip both these sides and join to the next chain three space here with a single crochet. So insert my hook into that chain three space and single crochet and there is our second strap. Now continue single crocheting in the next stitch and in each stitch down this side to the corner chain three space. Here's that corner chain three space, three single crochet in the chain three space. Now we are going to be working along the bottom. I'm turning this completely around. 
Well, first I'm gonna work, work along this side, then we'll get to the bottom. So let's work along this side, single crochet in each stitch along the side, and then where we get to where they are joined, we'll kind of have to just find good place to put our next single crochet. So I've gone across this side, here's the next chain space, I will work two single crochet in this chain space. And then we'll work our next single crochet in this join space. So kind of just insert your hook in a spot that makes sense and work a single crochet. I kind of had to go down a little bit in order to find a place where my hook will insert if I wanted it to be in the center and not to the side. I kind of went down to this next stitch here to work that single crochet in the join space. And then two single crochet in that chain two space. And then again, single crochet in each stitch across to that chain three corner where you will work three single crochet in that corner. So now we will continue single crocheting along the bottom, working those three single crochets in our corners, and then here in these corners where um, two squares meet, two single crochet in each of the chain spaces, and then one single crochet in this space where, um, in the join space where they meet. And then single crochet along this final side, just like we did on the other side. Finally, joining to our very first single crochet where we started. So I finished single crocheting up this final side and I joined the very first single crochet of this round with a slip stitch. Don't fasten off just yet, we're not done, we're going to do another couple rounds along the bottom. So we can kind of see now how those that round of single crochet just kind of cleaned up our sides. We were able to add our strap. So now we're going to be working only along the bottom. So starting here where we joined, we're going to turn and we're going to work along this bottom side all the way here to the very opposite corner. So here I am where I joined. I'm going to start with a chain four and I'm going to turn my work because I'm working along the bottom. So here's my strap. So I'm going to be working this direction away from the strap along the bottom. And this chain four counts as a double crochet plus one chain. And I'll be working um, double crochet and chain one across this bottom. So because this chain three counts as a double crochet, I'm not starting here. I already have my chain three, which counts as my double crochet in this first stitch. I'm going to skip one and double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one single crochet, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one double crochet, double, I'm sorry, skip one single crochet, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet in the next. And we're going to work that all the way across our row, across the bottom of our top. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, all the way to the very opposite corner. So here I've worked that all the way 
around or across the bottom of my top until I reach the very opposite corner from where I started, that corner right before the next strap where the top of the, the top of the shirt begins. So now we're going to turn and we have one more row left across the bottom. You can see all of my double crochet and chain spaces across the bottom. Started here, worked all across these bottom three squares and up this final side to the opposite corner. So now we're going to have one more row left across the bottom. We will work in these chain spaces across. So chain one and turn and then this very first chain space single crochet. And then the next chain space two double crochet in the same space, chain two, and then two more double crochet in that same space. So we're making kind of a shell-like pattern right there. And then single crochet in the next chain space. Next chain space, two double crochet, chain two, and then two double crochet in that same space. So you'll have four double crochet and chain two all in the same chain one space. Single crochet in the next chain space. So we're only working in the chain one spaces across for this last row. So now again, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in the next chain one space. single crochet in the next chain one space. And repeat that all the way across to the opposite side. So now that this last row is finished with these shell-like sections, for our top, we are going to start adding some fringe. So this is the front of my work where you can see the, um, the slip stitches where we joined and where it's the right side of the stitches. For these shell stitches here, it's the right side of my um, squares. This is the right side of my work. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to be adding my fringe to the wrong side. So here I'm on the wrong side. I have added a few pieces of fringe already here. And what I did is I cut, it, um, I cut some pieces of yarn. These are approximately 10 inches each. Um, I just kind of cut one 10 inches and then I just measured against itself as I cut the pieces. It's definitely not exact or anything. It's all approximate. So I just cut myself a little pile. I'll probably end up needing more, but I went ahead and cut a few here to get us started. So to add the fringe, I took three strands. You can make this as thick or thin as you like. I just did three because we are going to be folding it in half. So then it will obviously end up being six. Once you fold it in half and we will insert our hook. We're going to work in the fringe in these chain spaces from this last row here. So I'll insert my hook in that chain two space. I'm going to take my three strands of 10 inch yarn and fold it in half here. Take my hook and pull it through. You don't have to use the hook, I just like to use the hook to pull it through. Pull it up a bit because you're gonna have to put your fingers in there to grab the yarn. I like to pull the hook out Work your fingers in there and grab the rest of it. And then pull it tight here. And then you can see the knot part will be on the front of our work. And you can also see that they are uneven at the end here. That's why I like to cut my yarn plenty, yaw, uh, plenty long, because I can just trim it all to be the same size. So 
it's uneven. There's some short ones, long ones at the end, but that's why I like to cut them long because I'm just going to trim it up at the end. So I'll take three more here and fold them in half. Put my hook in here and pull them through. And then grab those six strands and pull them tight. And we will do that all the way in each of these chain spaces across the bottom. And I have finished adding on all my, um, all my fringe. I did give it a quick steam um, to make sure all of the pieces were nice and straight. And then here on the back, I added a button. So I went to the back of my top and I added a button. I sewed it to one side and then I used this chain space here as my buttonhole. And there you have it. Your boho tank top is complete. I hope you love it and I hope you have so much fun wearing this fun little summer tank top. Thank you so much for joining me and we will see you next time.